Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 797. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 797 to 798, click on the link below the video. Hey, here's uh, sheet 797. We have a list here on sheet list. And what we want to do is we want to have some sort of checkbox or mechanism to check items off on the list. And once we do that, we want to then take the items from the list and dump them into this sheet. So in, it's in essence, I want a sublist depending on what I check here. Now, we're going to do this in two steps. We're going to add a little uh, a feature that will allow us to check things. And then we're going to create a, an array formula over here that will extract those records. Now, we could use fan something fancy like on the developer ribbon, some check boxes or something. but why bother when we have data validation? We could just put something, in the, or even without data validation, you could put a Y or an X or something like that. So I'm going to type checked equals Y. And I'm going to get this formatting here using that button, the Format Painter, and click there. Highlight all these cells, and I'm going to use data validation to only allow a Y in the cell. Now you could go after highlighting the cells up to data data validation, data validation. But how about the keyboard shortcut Alt-DL? Now, I don't want any value. I want just something from a list. The source, I'm just going to type a Y. Click OK. All right, so honey, spam, and grapes. That's what I need. All right, now, the first thing we want to notice is these are the items we want to return to this other sheet over here, right? But these are the items that trigger it. Now, when we get over to this sheet over here, in essence, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking up Y's. Now, the problem here is that if we had only one Y, it's easy. We use a lookup function. But as soon as you have, you're looking something up that has repeats, then you run into trouble. You have to do some sort of array formula. Okay, but here's the deal. We're going to tell our formula, hey, look up the y's, and then return that, that, and that. But what is, we're going to use the index function. And this range right here is going to be the range with the values to return. But the index function is going to be, is going to need to be told the item is in row two. Now, don't get fooled by that. This is the first item in the list, right? So we need a two, a four, and a four, five, six, eight. So I'm going to over here just, just to help us understand how this works. So our formula is somehow going to have to know. It's going to look up the, a duplicate item. And it's going to also have to tell the lookup function index that the items are in row four, 2, 4, and 8. All right, let's go over here. That's kind of the setup. First thing we do need to know is one of the things we're going to need for this formula is to know how many y's there are. So I'm just going to use the count if function. Count if. Now the range, I'm going to skip that for a moment, or we're going to have to go over to this other sheet. The criteria is going to be y. And you have to put that y in double quotes, because that's how what we're counting, how many y's are over there. Now back to the range. I simply click on the sheet list. I highlight the range with all of the uh, data validation. You can see our formula kind of up there. Control Enter, and there it is. It puts in what's called sheet reference syntax. That explanation point says, hey, I'm not just a normal range of cells on this sheet. I'm on the sheet list. All right, so there's three of them. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our index function. Now let's just see how the index function works. All right, index, you give it an array. And then you tell it what row number. All right. I'm going to go over and get this array. I'm going to click on list and get this right here. I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock those cell references. You can kind of see that there. And just before we get to the fancy part of this, I'm going to click up here and type a comma to get to the row number. And I'm going to put a 2. Close parentheses, Control Enter. That's the essence of how index works. You give it a range and then the row number. Now I could copy this down, right? And then change this to 4 and 7. Well, that's never going to work, because we, we need to be check things over there and have this move dynamically. Ah, But what we need is a 4, sorry, a 2, a 4, a 7. 
and we need it to change. So I want to build a little formula here. Now, what we're going to, this is the part that's kind of tricky. Over here, again, we're looking up y's, and then we need to return these multiple items, but we're just talking about the row numbers here. As the formula copies down, it can't be separated by spaces like this. It just needs to list a 2, 4, an 8, in essence, right here. Or I, I put uh, 2, 4, 7, it's 2, 4, 8, I think it is. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to use something called the small function. Now, if we could create an array of row numbers that have the y that ultimately correspond to these, we can create this array inside a small function. Small function is great. As you copy the, fun the small function down, it'll take the first smallest, second smallest, third smallest. Ah, but we're not going to use the small function directly because that is in our, would require us creating an array formula that requires control shift enter, which is a special keystroke. We're going to use a new 2010 function called aggregate. Aggregate. Aggregate function has a bunch of options, and the beauty of it is that it can handle arrays without any special uh, keyboard shortcut to enter the formula. Now, as you scroll down here, you can sure enough see there's a small. It's number 15, comma. And then the options. We're going to run into some problems with errors, and we want the, the, the function to, we're going to get some divide by zero errors. And we want them to just ignore them, so we're going to pick the second part of aggregate, ignore errors, comma. Now the array. Remember we mentioned we needed to create an array with row numbers. So I'm going to do something. Uh, I'm going to put some um, row numbers in here. And we're going to get those row numbers by using the row function. Now I have to go back over here and get, and it doesn't matter which one of these you use, but you have to highlight the exact range, whether here or here, so that we get 2 to 9, the actual row numbers. You can kind of see that up here. I'm going to hit F4 to lock it. Now, that right there wouldn't work because 2 to 9, that's not what we want. We want 1 to 8. So I'm going to subtract from this the row num the, uh, use the row function again, and say subtract row 2. Now I need to lock that one too with the F4. Now right now, and actually you can do something tricky here. You can take your formula up here, and in uh, edit mode, if you highlight a formula element and hit the F9 key, it evaluates. Now you can see I get 0 to 7. Well, that's not what I want either, so I'm going to Control Z. Well, now I'm back over to this sheet. Oh, so I just add 1. Now the reason you do this convoluted method here is because that's robust. If you ever insert rows above it or move your table anywhere, it will always give you the numbers 1 to 8. All right, so that's inside of uh, aggregate the array. Now that's not quite what, we, quite what we want because that gives us all the row numbers. We want only 2 4 and 8. Well, what's the trigger for 2, 4, and 8? It's the letter Y. So watch this. We're going to divide that array by, and we're going to have to go and get this uh, range again, except for this time we have to get the uh, range with the Y's. Now I'm up here again, so I'm going to hit F4. And I'm going to build it up here. I'm going to say, hey, anything in there is equal to in double quotes Y and double quotes close parentheses. Now I'm going to do that same little trick here. I'm going to highlight this and hit the F9 key. Now notice it gives me a bunch of trues and falses. There's a true in the second position, a true in the fourth, and a true in the eighth. Now I'm going to control Z to undo that. That um, listing of falses and trues will actually give us, when we do division, zeros and ones. Any operation on a list of trues and falses, will any operation at all will give it give us ones and zeros, that is the operation division. That's the perfect thing. So only the row numbers up here that are divided by 1 will be entered into the small function. Now, let's go ahead and check this out. Let's hit F9 key. And sure enough, 2, 4, 8. The divide by zeros, those are the errors. The 6 will totally ignore those. Now I'm going to Control-Z 
as quickly as I can. Now, the small function needs to know as it copies down which one to uh, extract, this first, second, third, fourth, fifth, smallest, etc. So I'm going to type comma, and the k, that's the which one of the small ones do you want. We're going to build a formula incrementer called rows, and we're sitting in cell C4, and so I'm going to type C dollar sign 4 colon C4. Now what that does is one part it says, how many rows are there from 4 to 4? Well, now there's only one, right? But since this is locked and that's not, as you copy it down, it will increment 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's close this off. Control-Enter. And let's copy it down. 2, 4, 8. Now let's just look at this rows here. You can see now it says how many rows between 4 and 5. There's 2, so it got the second biggest. Here, how many rows from 4 to 6? There are 3. All right, so now this little bit right here, I'm going to copy this. That huge thing right there is what goes into the row argument for index. So I'm going to copy, escape, come over here, highlight that right there, and control V. Control Enter and double click and send it down. Now, one, and we'll deal with that number error in a, uh, just a moment. One problem with the way we did this is just a moment ago we built it over here in C4, and usually when you build your number incrementers using the row function, you use the cell reference that the, the formula is actually housed in. So I need to change that over here. I'm not in C, I'm in A. That's more robust, because if we left it C over here, if we ever like deleted all this over here, we'd get a reference error. Now, the last little bit is how do we turn the num off? Well, that's why we have this. We come up here, and we say, hey, big formula. This whole thing we're going to just treat as, as a thing, right? If, and I'm going to use my same rows again, so I'm going to steal this. Because remember, this is a number increment. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4 as we copy it down. If rows is greater than 3, and I have to lock that B1, F4, then what do I want? That means I'm past the, all the yeses, possible yeses. The true logical test is when rows is greater than the 3. The value if true, well, if that's true, I want to double quote for please show nothing. Otherwise, if it's false, which means it's still below 3, then there's the big thing. The value of false is that big index. Close parentheses, control enter, double click and send it down. Now I can delete all this or just move this over here. And now let's test it. Let's come over here. Let's uh, delete everything. There's the list. Come over here. So now I should have flour, spam, oranges, and grapes. Flour, spam, oranges, and grapes. All right, uh, create, uh, have a list, check some things off, have them appear on another sheet. See you next trick.